Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Mandy, and um, during this video I was kind of fumbling my way through figuring out how to use the conveyor belts for the X-Tool S1. I have a 20 watt, and I was really grateful that they sent this to me because I wanted to be able to show you like the features that you can um, obviously get with your machine. So it doesn't come with this. You, you either have to upgrade it or purchase it separately but it is pretty cool so there's some places where you can connect it in the front and in the back so you do have to have the riser base which i have installed and you would basically open the front and the back pass through but what's cool about this is with the conveyor belt you can actually use the pass through feature and cut a pretty big piece of wood or engrave a really large sign um so the reason why i chose to try it is I was working on a porch leaner um, which I didn't engrave that or anything but I was cutting quite a bit of MDF at one time so I thought well I'll try out the conveyor belt and I'll use the 18 by 24 cuts of MDF versus what would normally fit in the machine and then I'll probably save some waste that way so that was my logic because um, I wanted to try to use it so Basically, all you see me doing is trying to figure out like where you screw in the the little pieces or the whatever this is called to the tray. So much like anything else, um, like the screen, the screens that you can engrave and various things, there's a way to kind of connect them to the, the tray so that when you set it in here, it's going to hold steady, right? So it just makes sense. And then there's a, um, there's a port in the front of your machine opposite the side where I am where you can connect things like your rotary tool, your conveyor belt, and then the machine is very intuitive. It knows to change. So in XCS, um, which I don't show you a whole lot of because I was still trying to figure it out, um, your canvas changes and the top part of your canvas has more of a gray space than before. That was really confusing for me. I had to watch a couple of people and kind of figure out that that's accounting for um, the, it's accounting for the, basically the top of what's in the, basically in the machine. Um, it's kind of showing you like your design shouldn't start that high because it's going to feed your material in. So um, what I did is I kind of ran a test cut with a piece of cardboard so I could kind of see how it's going to feed it in, um, you know, where is it going to start, and that kind of stuff. So um, I was cutting uh, the, wel the letters for welcome for a porch leaner and then like this little flower cut out. Um, this was actually my first porch leaner as well. So it was a giant experiment for me. Um, but what's really cool about this is even though you might have your X tool inside, you can kind of turn it sideways, extend your table and use the conveyor belt. So um, now obviously you have to be mindful of the fact that it, when you have the pass through, you're going to have more fumes and stuff than when you have everything enclosed. So you need to really have adequate ventilation. Um, at the time that I tried this, this was in a spare bedroom and I had the window open. And um, But, you know, now I have the inline fan, which would make a difference. But still, if you're cutting for a long time, obviously this would be ideal to, to have outside or have in a garage or something where you have the ability to open everything up. Uh, but it is still a cool feature that you can take advantage of. This is also a way that you would cut larger wood rounds, etc., because you're extending um, the space, right? So what I'm doing here is putting together the rails. There's rails um, that come in front of the machine, and then there's rails that connect on the inside and go out through the back. And the cool thing about the rails is they're adjustable, so you can extend them um, pretty far actually. So that's what you see me doing here. 
Okay, so I thought these went in the front. These actually go on the inside, so they slide on the inside. So when you do this part, you need to make sure that you space it the right way so that it can fit in the riser base like that. Okay, so I think I'm going to try to do a test cut with this piece of cardboard. So I narrowed my rails a little bit um, for a more narrow piece. And I'm going to be doing a leaning porch sign, so I thought it would also be a good way to get a gauge for what the letters would do and if my flowers might cut. So um, there's a knob over here that you lower to put the pressure on the material, but you're not supposed to overdo the pressure. Um, the only bad thing is I don't think I have enough slack in my material. to do, oh, that's got a good grip. I don't think I have enough slack in my material because you need about 10 inches on the back side so that it doesn't get into the machine and get caught. So let me logically play this out. If I go in here and it's only gonna cut in this area, as long as I only cut up here, I think I should be okay. But from what I've seen and read, you need about this much on the back side so that it doesn't get in here and get cracked. And that made no sense to me when I saw people explain it, so hopefully that makes sense to you guys, because I was like, what? All right, so this is this is really just trash, so it's okay if you mess it up. So I'm just lowering this until it has a good grip on it. I can't pull on it, so I'm thinking that that's enough for it to feed. Um, now I'm going to turn the machine on, and because the doors are open, I'm not going to stay in here without goggles on or glasses on and that means my dogs have to leave and then we'll try to do a test cut and see if it works and see what happens so yeah all right it's humid outside so my screen looks foggy but so this is a piece of cardboard it's just slightly wider than my letters for my sign so what I've done is I slid it in I wasn't sure where to start but everything I read online said that you would um, frame it somehow so you could kind of see where it's going to cut but I wasn't sure if I was supposed to leave the material here feed it I'm a I overthink some of the simple things so yeah so this is a piece of cardboard um, I isolated my welcome letters so I'm only going to test cut the W I have my glasses on because my riser base is open so this is covered but there's still light coming out here so we're going to try it um, I still don't understand tabs. <laughs> I'm going to figure that out. Um, but for now, I'm just going to arrange it. I'm going to cut this, make sure it looks right on my board. And then that this is going to be the right size. And then I'm going to figure out how to cut out all my letters. I didn't share my screen, but here is Xtool. And this gray area, you don't... This is outside of what the laser is going to cut. The laser is only going to cut in this very small area. And then it's going to feed from inside. So I hope that that makes sense. There's really good videos on that, um, and I'll probably try to do more of that in the future, but I've been I've been working on setting this up for a really long time, so I'm just gonna test it now at this point. Okay. This is just a little action shot so you can kind of see it moving. It's the conveyors moving it in and out of the laser. I did figure out that my settings were not cutting, they were just scoring, so, you know, trial and error. Okay, that just scored it. It did not cut it. Um, well, maybe it did. It didn't cut through. So I'm going to raise the power. I think the speed is fine. And I'm going to do it again. This is a terrible shot, but I'm actually going to raise it from 15 to 20. I saw someone who had a 40 watt do 30, 10, and 1. So this is it's, if it's going too fast, it won't burn all the way through. So I'm going to take this down to... Uh, it's less powerful laser, so 10 is probably okay on the speed. Um, I'm afraid to go too high on the power. Maybe we'll go to 23. Let's give it a shot. Looks like it's done a much better job. Okay, I thought people were being dramatic saying they did three passes, but even though I saw the light passing through, it still didn't quite go all the way through. So I'm gonna do exactly what I just did one more time. I think also the distance has a little bit to do with it. Um, like I could probably push it through, but it's gonna have a jagged edge. 
So I might as well figure out cardboard while we're doing this. So I could raise the power, um, but I'm a little concerned about doing that because it's smoking. But maybe we'll raise it to 25 and run it one more time. But I'm right here, I can emergency stop it if I have to. So far, no fires. Okay, so that worked. So this is this is the cardboard that came with my X tool. Um, so with the 20 watt, I would say it would be the same as the 40 watt based on having to do this four times. <laughs> so I would say 30 power, 10 speed, um, and I can't tell you for sure how many passes because you know it was trial and error. But nothing caught on fire, and um, I do have air assist on. And at one point I turned it on max to minimize the smoke, um, but I actually got less smoke when I increased the power. So. Now what I'm going to do is take this out and then I'm going to try this flower design on this side to see if this is going to get the details. From what I understand, the 20 watt can be very detailed. So I'm just curious um, if I'm going to be able to get that 3D look I'm looking for. So let's see. So this is what I'm cutting and I'm going to lower the speed by just one because even with that last cut, it didn't go all the way through in every place. We're just going to slow it down just a smidge. The details are pretty impressive for what this thing can do. Uh, Kind of a detailed design for cardboard though because it was um, actually burning through some of these fine lines but i think on wood this is going to actually do great so um, i'm not sure if it's going to fall all the way through um but i i stopped it and i'm going to run i'm going to run the rest of it at the 10. but look at the detail it's pretty awesome um, now, if we were engraving, obviously this would be no problem. Um, but the problem is, like, we're losing, we're not just losing, like, some of the, <laughs> we're not losing just the part that's supposed to come out, we're losing the part that's supposed to stay, so. Um, but this will also tell me if this is feasible or not. So I'm going to let it didn't cut all the way through, but I already lost some of the pieces. So ideally, if it had cut all the way through, even if I didn't have the detail here, because I can come in and color underneath it, would be okay and if I enlarge this like we would have better results I'm really jacking it up now well that should have actually been the part that stayed anyway we'll see um, I may have to try it on plywood but look at the detail that's I mean it even got the, the darkness of the flowers sorry I have ash on my fingers from messing with this okay so good test okay so here is kind of my Letters, I'm gonna cut them at 100% power, three speed, two passes, and lower the laser focus by three millimeters. That's what I do for quarter inch MDF on the 20 watt. Took me a while to figure that out. At the time that I did this, I did not know about tabs. I didn't understand what they were, but your tab placement is basically a way where you're telling the laser to lessen the power just a little bit where the tabs are so that your design doesn't fall all the way through and mess up your cutting. But I didn't know how to do that. Still don't fully understand that, so I didn't do it. And I did have to stop the laser and like take pieces out a couple times because like the letter would fall through. <laughs> anyway, so these are the things you kind of learn. But there are people who understand that better than I do. Some people say to lower it by 50%. That seems a lot to me, but anyway. This was my first one. Also, you can uh, spray paint ahead of time if you want to paint your board before you cut it. Just personal preference there. Okay, so here is our two dog ear fence posts. And sorry about the lighting. And I followed the direction from Kim and Garrett Make It and used these in the back. I used some wood glue. Um, I do think that the Puffy Gorilla Glue would work better because the boards are not always perfectly even, like right there, and it helps. Um, I did clamp them down, leave them overnight, but next time I will use this kind for the backer. But it's so far, it's holding just fine. So let me show you my letters. This, they're still wet, so, well humbug. So I did cut these with the quarter inch MDF. After a lot of trial and error, I did figure out that 100% power, four speed, two passes, Lowering the focus to two millimeters seems to be the trick. Does not mean you're not gonna have charring. There was very much charring on the edges. You might be able to see. I cleaned the edges with alcohol on a rag. 
to try to avoid it transferring to my picket, which seems good. The spray paint obviously helped. This is Rust-Oleum Kona Brown. It's like a reddish brown. But I put too much on at one time and it's still tacky, even though it's been sitting there over 12 hours. So I'm going to get a feel for where these letters are gonna go, but I'm not gonna try to put them on because even though I could glue them and just leave them alone, they need to be clamped down or have weight put on them and I don't wanna mess up the paint. But you can see the width is good. Ideally, we're going to lay these letters down with um, either this one, which is gonna puff up, so probably not this one, probably this one. The only reason I might need this one is because the board is uneven. So that would help, but I don't think it'll matter as long as there's contact point on both sides and you let it sit with the clamp on it, it should be fine. So yeah, I'll show you the next phase after we get there. This is kind of how I spaced out the letters to see, you know, what it looked like. And now we're gonna cut some flowers. And um, I did have to spritz my spray paint with water so it would finally dry, it was annoying. Okay, so the design that I chose um, was pretty similar to the one that we cut on the cardboard. And so I, I made a lot of mistakes and I learned a lot through this. So this is just the laser in action sped way up. So for one, I used um, Baltic birch plywood, which is normally fine, but the more intricate your design, the more you really need like MDF. So that's my tip to you. The more intricate your design, the more small lines, use three millimeter MDF instead of the three millimeter plywood. Um, as you can see, I, I either burned through my petals or some of my petals didn't cut. So normally, if I cut 3 millimeter MDF or like Baltic birch plywood, I would use 100% power 6 speed, right? One pass. But because of these small lines, um, like if we slowed it down so we got everything to cut out, um, we lost the bigger petals. So anyway... I created an outline um, to give a little more substance to the design and then I cut a backer and so I just decided to kind of roll with the way it turned out um, but again I would definitely use MDF next time and so I painted the top part that same Kona Brown and then I colored the backer um, just to I colored green where the I kind of drew it out I colored green where the leaves were and I colored um, and that's just an outdoor untinted house paint. Um, so I basically am using some color art purely pigments and I'm tinting the house paint and I'm just going to paint the backer. So again this was my first one. I didn't even fully understand how I could make that design 3D. I understand that a little bit better now but this was my very first one and the person who bought it was very happy with it. So. But that's me just kind of tinting the house paint. Um, I bought a small pint of external house paint just because it's um, more resilient outside. And this is going to be a porch leaner. But I'm also going to spray it with clear Rust-Oleum spray. So even if I didn't use outdoor paint, um, the fact that I'm sealing it pretty well will help. Anyway, so I'm going to speed this way up and then I'll show you the final result. Um, again. I probably would do this a little bit differently today if I were to do it again, but I decided to um, use the same outline because when I kind of looked at how the flowers would look, it seemed like it would be really obnoxiously different if I didn't kind of use that same outline. So anyway, I got feedback from the customer throughout the process, like, would you prefer this or this? And so... This is me kind of figuring things out. And of course, is there a better way to do this? Yes, like I could have sponge painted this. I could have used, um, it could have been so much easier, but this is the way I did it. And this was my very first one. I've since made like two more um, videos to come. But anyway, I, I do love the way it turned out. Not bad for my first one. Uh, like I said earlier in the video where I, I was telling you, I could have used the Gorilla Glue puffy paint for the letters don't do that because I did do that and it puffed up so bad 
and I had to go and scrape it off and touch up the paint everywhere on this poor little sign. It became a nightmare. So don't, don't do what I did. Okay, anyway, I'll speed this up and show you the final result. So when I put the lines with a pencil light, did them underneath where it would cover up so you wouldn't be able to see my pencil lines. But basically, I'm just kind of like, you know, different flower colors. You could have made it all the same. It wouldn't really matter. Um, but that was kind of the idea. Um, and then I, I glued it on. And then I sprayed it with a clear Rust-Oleum Satin Spray. And I'll show you a picture of it. All right, so here's a picture of the final result. Not bad for my first one. Um, the customer was very happy with it, and I was grateful for that. Anyway, um, I'm so grateful for Xtool, and I am. I never thought a laser would be so much fun, and I continue to discover all these amazing ways I can use it. So I do have a link. Um, I'm an Xtool affiliate. I do have a link in my description box below. If you shop through my link, it helps my channel. They have great deals going on right now, um, and they run great specials all the time. But it's, um, it's a lot of fun to see what you can do with a laser. So check it out. Thanks for watching. Bye.